three-minute warning, so we're live now on Facebook. Welcome to our viewers. Welcome to our council meeting tonight, Tuesday, April the 5th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. I'd like to ask you all to please silence your cell phones and any electronic devices and please stand for the prayer and the pledge. The prayer will be by our planning director, Scott Ankerson, and our pledge by Councilman at Large College. Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before you tonight. We thank you for your presence here in this meeting tonight. God, we thank you for uh, your hedge of protection that you keep around our first responders, our police, our fire, public works. God, just keep them safe. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice for our sins on Calvary's cross. We ask that you be with our leaders tonight, give them wisdom and unity as they make decisions to move the city forward in a positive direction. Uh, we thank you again, God, that your word says you will never leave us and will forsake us. We ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman College, and thank you, Mr. Ankerson. That brings us to our agenda order approval. Do we have any changes or additions by our city manager? Yes, we have effective page 120 in the minutes back your seat. Um, which reverses the order of the Thank you. Do we have any other changes? Do we have a motion to approve the agenda order with corrected page 128 on the minutes? So moved. Motion by Councilman Gallat. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman College. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to our announcements by our city manager, Ms. Polly uh, We have a community camp out April 9th starting at 12 p.m. until April 10th until 12 p.m. at Shepherd State Park. Our Earth Day celebrations will be Friday, April 22nd from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. at Shepherd State Park. You will be able to celebrate Earth Day in Nature's Playground and enjoy all the amenities that Shepherd Park has to offer. You can also stop by the Welcome Center for Earth Day goodies. Tasty Thursday will be April 28th beginning at 11 a.m. at the Singing River Mall property. The Gaucher Mayor's Youth Council will host Gaucher Game Day to include a kickball tournament, 
Cornhole Tournament and Color War on Saturday, April 30th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Gaucher Sportsplex and Gaucher First United Methodist Church. Gaucher's Farmer's Market will begin the second Saturday of every month beginning in May and going through September starting at 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. at George Martin City Park. Thank you, Ms. Chancey. That brings us to our presentation agenda, and the first will be Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month, and then we have a board member with CASA, Ms. Tanya Fowler, and another volunteer with CASA, Mr. Larry Fowler. If y'all would like to come up front, um, we will um, present you with the proclamation. Okay, a proclamation of the mayor and city council of the city of Goche, Mississippi. Whereas the city of Goche prides itself on giving back to the community, contributing to the quality of life among our citizens. And whereas Jackson County CASA, in association with the National Court Appointed Special Advocate, CASA Association, speaks for the best interests of abused and neglected children who were involved in the juvenile courts and whereas more than 36,307 children throughout the state of Mississippi are reported to suffer from some form of abuse or neglect each year. And whereas of those roughly 6,495 were substantiated investigations, meaning at least one form of abuse or neglect was found. And whereas in Jackson County, there were about 262 or more substantiated incidents of abuse, neglect, and or exploitation, and whereas within our state, 52 children died according to the most recent federal numbers reported of abuse and neglect. And whereas through a national effort, the Goche community members are encouraged to join together to raise awareness for those children fallen victim to abuse and neglect throughout the month of April. And whereas this effort will give abused and neglected children in our community and around the county a chance for a safe and positive future. Now, therefore, we, the mayor and council for the city of Goche, Jackson County, Mississippi, by virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim April 22 as Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month in this city and in doing so urge all citizens to join in a national effort to raise awareness and help prevent child abuse and neglect. Mayor Casey Bond, City of Goche. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Would you like to say anything? So again, I'm Tanya Fowler. I am one of the board members um, for CASA. Um, and I'm, I'm proud to do so. so. Just to let you know, we are a nonprofit agency. Uh, we've been established since 1985. Um, we're also an agency with the United Way for Jackson and George counties. Uh, we are funded uh, only on donations, a lot of allocations from our uh, governing leaders, <laughs> and uh, grants from the United Way um, for the Jackson and George County. Um, our mission is to recruit everyday citizens to provide a, a voice uh, for our children. Um, and I believe that's, that's probably what I'm the most excited about. Um, these very wonderful people come in, um, we make sure that they're highly trained, and then once they, they take their training, they will be given their, their child or sometimes children as they come into the foster system. Um, you know, everybody's busy. We, we have many agencies that work with these children, but our volunteer is the one person that will be there. They go to school for them. They talk to their teachers. They talk to their parents. They talk to the people where they're living. Um, and they go to court. And they are by their side from the day they enter until the day that they leave. And, um, and these are just the best group of people I've ever met in my life. They're fantastic. Um, so, um, at, with this April being the uh, Abuse and Awareness of Prevention Month, <laughs> again, 
Um, it is right now yearly about 408,000 children. Uh, that's a big number. Uh, in the United States, they do experience some form of uh, abuse and neglect. Um, right now, as of March the 1st, uh, we're showing about 3,853 still uh, children in the Mississippi Department yeah. of Child Protection. Um, sadly, Jackson County is leading that number with 273 of those children. Um, so our goal at, at this point is to get more volunteers in, get them trained, because we would really love to have um, a cost of volunteer for each one of these children as they come in. Um, during uh, 2021, we've served, we, only, we were only able to serve 90, 92%, and we're trying to make that 100% goal. So at this, point, at this point, I would like to recognize and appreciate our youth court leaders, staff, uh, Mississippi Department of uh, Protection of Services, and um, everybody else who comes out there and works just as hard as just to make a whole uh, group effort for these children. So on behalf of Jackson County CASA, we would like to thank you for your faithful support in our mission. Thank you for, compl uh, for compl uh, <laughs> proclaiming uh, this month for child abuse awareness. And because of you, uh, you are the reason we're able to continue our mission. Um, also on Wednesdays, we wear blue. So if you're able to do that in your offices, uh, wear your blue, get your, uh, your selfies together, and uh, tag it to our uh, Jackson County Council. Thank you again, Tanya. Um, we're going to get a photo with our council could stand up, and also our attorney and our uh, police chief, he works with the uh, city manager. Come to the front and we'll get out some photos with you. And I'm going to look at the groceries. You're also. a volunteer. You want to come up? And he can get a photo. Okay. Just call him a second. All right, everybody. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Hold it. That'd <laughs> <laughs> be good. I'm just standing in the room. <laughs> One, two, three. Great. Thank you again, Tanya. Y'all do a great job. If you never visit Casa, I encourage you to visit. We have board members that their spouses and them have served. I volunteer for them. Um, they have great causes. When they have fundraisers, I encourage you to support their fundraisers because their mission, um, like you heard tonight, they need volunteers and also awareness in our system. Our police are involved in that a lot because they are on the scene or get the calls also. Um, so we think about y'all when those tough decisions y'all have to make. Next, we have a, we're going to recognize our linemen. So if Mr. Lorenzo today, Lorenzo comes and Mr. Chris Gallat with Singing River Electric Cooperative, if they will come up here, they're linemen for them and represent our power company. We have that services our area. Um, Mr. Lorenzo today, Lorenzo services Goche and Mr. Chris Gallat services Bankley. So, he does have a little bit of gauche up there, I'm sure, in his district. So. A proclamation recognizing National Lineman Appreciation Day, whereas the city of Goche celebrates and recognizes linemen and wishes to honor these men and women for their exemplary service, and whereas the profession of linemen is ste steeped in per personnel, family, and professional tradition, and Whereas linemen play a vital role in the nation's economy by maintaining and growing the energy infrastructure in the United States. And whereas linemen are often the first responders during storms and other catastrophic, catastrophic events, working to make the scene safe for other public safety heroes. And whereas linemen sacrifice time away from their families to work in dangerous conditions in order to keep schools and other businesses open. And whereas recognizing linemen, the profession of linemen, 
the contributions of these brave men and women who protect public safety and expressing support for the designation of April the 18th, 2022 as National Lineman Appreciation Day. Now, therefore, we, Mayor and Council of the City of Gautier, Mississippi, do proclaim April 18th, 2022 as National Lineman Appreciation Day. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands and caused the seal of the City of Gautier, Mississippi to be affixed on this, the fifth day of April, 2022, Mayor Casey Vaughn, City of Gautier, Mississippi. Thank, Thank you again, Mr. Lindsay. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay. Over the years, like it says on here in the proclamation, that they are always there as first with the first responders to make the scene safe. Uh, I witnessed that, and uh, I had a whole lot more respect for them during Katrina when I saw them in action when we had the power grids were down all over. But Chris specifically, because I've known him for probably 20 years, has always looked out after the public safety side, and he's called me multiple times to check on us because he knows we're out here working in the same uh, conditions. But he's he taken an active, act, an active, I guess, role in trying to take care of the public safety side as well as the community. And I'd like to thank him for that, as well as he's told me that he's about ready to retire. And I, I want to thank him and recognize him for all of his years of service. And I thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Board. We'll get the board to stand up and the city manager to come up front and we should be just city attorney and we will get our photo in with Mr. Today. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. One more. Perfect. And thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to our business agenda. <clears throat> Consideration for an abatement at 1717 Dolphin Drive, Gautier, Mississippi, estate of Gene Phillips Langston by Planning Director, Mr. Scott Ankerson. So, Mary, thank you. Planning staff is asking council to consider an abatement at 1717 Dolphin Drive, Gautier, Mississippi. Uh, the property is shown in the estate of Gene Phillips. Some background on this property, a complaint came from a concerned citizen regarding multiple code violations of the care and maintenance of this property. The code violations were reviewed and substantiated by the city's code enforcement department. It was at this time a code violation file was opened against the property. It was March 30th, 2021. <clears throat> the property had proven to be overgrown at that time. Code enforcement made multiple attempts to locate the owner of the property. And the property still shows to be in the estate of Gene Phillips. A notice that was left regarding the property and no answer was received. Since that time, the property, the house on the property caught fire and burned on December 7, 2021. The vacant property, uh, the, the vacant burnt property remains. So the property owners in the vicinity remain concerned with the visible appearance of this property and what remains of the unsafe structure. The citizens are concerned for the health, the safety, and the welfare of their neighborhood the property and City Hall Bulletin Board have been posted with a copy of the public hearing notice two weeks prior to the scheduled hearing. Uh, the property has found to be abandoned, is unsafe, is an eyesore to the city and surrounding neighbors, and the code enforcement office is seeking abatement. The staff's recommendation that the City Council approve the abatement is presented and move forward by taking action after the statutory 10-day appeal period for the date of Council action and adjournment. And if approved, council may charge the cost as a lien against the property to be collected upon sale of the property, collect the cost through civil proceedings, and may add $1,500 to 50% to either of the above collection methods. 
code enforcement officer requests the city council approve this abatement for the demolishing of the structure and to clear the entire lot and secure it in accordance with Mississippi codes. I've uh, included the pictures of the property and the postings, the parcel information, abatement uh, public notice, and the abatement hearing notification letter, and the entire code case file for your review. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Do we have any public comments? No public comments. That brings, do we have a motion by council to approve a abatement at 1717 Dolphin Drive, Gautier, Mississippi, estate of Gene Phillips, Langston, PID number 8541400.000. And if we have a motion, don't forget, you have to put how you, if there's a fee assessed and how you want it collected. I'll make a motion. We approve abatement at 1717 Dolphin Drive, uh, estate of Gene Phillips, Langston. Uh, charges a lien to the property in the amount of 50% of the cost. And how do you want to collect it? Uh, collect it on the sale of the property. Lien. 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 Okay. We have, a, that. we have a motion by Councilman George, a second by Councilman College. Do we have any discussion starting with Ward 1, Councilman George? I do not. I'm just happy to see this has moved forward and we can get it cleaned up. Thank you, Councilman George. Councilman Jackson? Um, they, they did. They were able to contact the people uh, on the property uh, after there's still no contact? No, sir. We believe the owner is actually deceased. Oh, okay. I understand. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Councilman Galat? How long would it take us to clean that property up since it's uh, pretty Once approved, well, we'll damaged? Once we'll go out for a uh, cost estimate. We, sh you know, we should get those estimates within the next couple of weeks, and then it's up to when the contractor can start the work. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Councilman College? Uh, are we going to take up the slab also? I see you there. Yes. So it's going to be just completely vegetative afterwards yep. down to the soil and we'll have the contractor actually add seed and hay okay Very good. that's it for me thank you councilman Pop. councilman anderson no comment councilman elvin no comment we have a motion and a second all in favor motion carries thank you um mr anchorson i know the citizens down there will be ecstatic that this property gets cleaned up because it is belighted and no action been taken. That brings us to item number two, approval of the docket of claims. We all received them by our city clerk, Ms. Montgomery, by email. They were on the website and they were attached to the agenda. So we will not have a presentation because they were already presented. Any public comments? No public comments. Do we have a motion to approve the docket of claims? I make a motion we approve the docket of claims provided that all entries thereon are true, correct, properly entered, and not fraudulent. We have a motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Elbin. Any discussion starting with Councilman George? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No, sir. Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman College? No comment. Councilman Anderson? No comment. Councilman Elbin? No comment. All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to consent agenda. All items approved in one motion, unless we pull one. Number one, approval of a minutes from recess council meeting held March the 15th, 2022. Two, authorization to remove broken office equipment and furniture from the city of Goche's inventory. Three, annual renewal of contract with Singing River Services for the Life Care Plus program. Four, authorization to apply for a lease for public trust titlings as required for the Shepherd State Park kayak and boat launch project and to allow Cypress Environmental Services to serve as the authorized agent for the application process. Number five, approval of the Mississippi High School Activities Association concussion information form to, in order to provide a concussion policy for the city of Goche's youth athletic programs. Six, authorization to accept a monetary donation from Jerry Lee's Grocery for the City of Goche's Mayor's Youth Council. Seven, authorization to accept a monetary donation for the City of Goche's Youth Baseball and Softball League. 
eight approval of the water and sewer adjustments dated April the 5th, 2022 in the amount of $13,259.87. Number nine, approval to waive all fees associated with the Shepherd State Park for the Boy Scouts of America Singing River District to, hope it, to host a camping activity and service project. 10 authorization to retire our K9 unit Caesar from service and to transfer ownership to Lieutenant Trace Williams. 11 approval of a purchase agreement with Sunbelt Fire Inc. for a new E1 fire truck and equipment. 12 authorization to approve the proposal by Philadelphia Insurance Companies for Goche's Youth Baseball and Softball League participant accidental insurance policy. Do we have any? one want to remove an item i'm going to remove agenda item number 10. i'll just say the same anybody want to remove any other items so do we have a motion to approve one through nine and eleven through twelve so moved motion by councilman college do we have a second 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 by councilman galat all in favor Motion carries. That brings us to consent agenda item number 10. If Lieutenant Williams will bring our um, lovely city employee, our K9 Caesar, to the front. And also, I would like to recognize that his mother um, and father, Jamie and Corey Mac. Mac McNamee, I didn't want to butcher it, from Chico, California is here also. So if you all would like to come to the front with them, you're more than welcome. But I think we should get, Trace, do you want to share a few words? We appreciate all you've done um, with Caesar and even with Caesar's behavior recently. Um, we wish you well, but we know Caesar has collected a lot of money for our citizens here to help fight drugs here on the streets in the city of Goche. And we appreciate you and um, Caesar for that. Thank you. Would you like to say anything about Caesar? Or anything? Uh, uh, during his what eight year career, he's Help seize over $2.5 million in cash seizures off of drug smugglers and uh, probably close to 500 pounds of narcotics off the streets. Um, he's been a great dog and uh, we've placed a couple times at the canine trials each year. Uh, that's all I got. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Well, we thank you, um, Lieutenant Williams, but if you stand there, we're going to have um, a motion and a second, and then we'll vote, and then we'll call your parents to the front for a photo. Yep. Do we have a motion for authorization to retire K-9 unit Caesar from service and to transfer ownership to Lieutenant Mayor, Trace I Williams? Just, I have a comment. Yeah. Okay. I want to pull it up. I am also. Okay. Uh, first up, in reference to uh, Officer Williams and, and Caesar, thank you for your service. I guess technically I could be considered a uh, stepdad since I was close. <laughs> and uh, also I have a question for the chief. Are we, how many all canines do we have in service at this point? We currently have two. We need to replace that. Okay, that was my next question. Are we going to have another hand? Okay, that's all. Do we have a motion to authorize to retire canine unit Caesar from service and to transfer ownership to Lieutenant Trace Williams? So moved. Second. Motion by Councilman Galat. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Elvin. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman George. Um, if you know me, you know I love dogs, and I especially love police dogs. It's a fascinating thing that they can do, and especially when they're well trained, they're they're um, better than some councilmen. You know, they, <laughs> they do a good job. Uh, he, he does a harder job than I could ever do. Um, so it's it's sad to see him go, but I look forward to the next K9 we're going to have because they, they really make a difference in the force. Thank you, Councilman George. Councilman Jackson. I uh, wish you the best. Sorry about you. It was the couch, was it? It was a car. <laughs> Why didn't you tell the story? Uh, uh, I'll uh, tell the story. <laughs> That's all I have. It has an interesting appetite. Yes. <laughs> Councilman Gallat. It looks like he really likes you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for your service. Beautiful dog, and I hope he continue to 
have a long life with him. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. Councilman Collins. Is he going to get his own recliner? <laughs> <laughs> he made out of wood, huh? <laughs> Steel. Uh, but, but thank you to uh, you and everybody that serves on our police department and first responders. Uh, you know, do a fantastic job. And I couldn't be proud of everything. So. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Councilman Collins. <laughs> Councilman Anderson. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lieutenant Williams. and. Thank you for taking good care of Caesar. And I've got a recliner that's killing my back, and I may donate it to you. <laughs> I didn't even practice on it. <laughs> Councilman Elvin, do you have any well, additional? Well, I spoke out of turn, but I, again, I want to reiterate thank you for your service, and the dog has served us well over the years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Elvin. Um, I have to say, just so the citizens know the story of why we're laughing about the um, sofa, Caesar has some separation anxiety issues from his handler, Lieutenant Williams. And Lieutenant Williams was gone maybe a little too long for um, Caesar. So he decided to break out of the kennel and destroy his leather recliner. <laughs> so it being, you know, a city personnel also, we have to take care of the property, but we don't mind doing that for a wonderful canine who made a lot of money for us. And I just, um, Lieutenant Williams, you know, we're not laughing that year. So recliner got damaged, but that's a strong dog. But, uh, okay, so we um, have a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. And um, if your parents will come to the front and the council stand up. Stand up. Um, Paula, you go I thought she was going down there. Thank you. Paula and Captain, the police, um, our dispatchers, y'all are part of public safety. Um, and our police are here. Our, we got our chief, our new chief, our captain, and other lieutenants and officers here. Polygon, right? That dog like a horse. All right, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Perfect. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Okay, that brings us to study agenda, discuss citizen comments. You can stand up, state your name, address, and you have three minutes, but can you come to the podium because we are live and it is for the audio, the microphone. If you come to the podium, um, we would appreciate that. Any citizen comments? Mr. Hammond, we appreciate your concerns and your um, hand in your comments to us and we will get with the city manager and address those, get you answers to your questions. Thanks. You're welcome. No citizen comments brings us to our council comments. It's our first meeting of the month. I'm sorry, sir. Go. Good afternoon. My name is Charles Moore and I live in 1920 West And uh, somebody knocked out a sign down. And I wanted, in a way, we could get it replaced. We have discussed that, and I've sent a, a, a sample sign rather than going back with a brick monument type. Yeah. I sent them a, a photo of some of the citizens in there, a sample sign of more of a wood post type monument sign to go in place of the, the brick, which would be safer than somebody crashing into the brick one like they did and it would be less expensive to replace. I haven't heard back from those folks yet as to whether they want to stay with the brick monument or go with a new wooden post type sign like we're using in some of the other subdivisions. But I was gonna to try to get around today and it rained and I went looking and riding the streets and I didn't get around to, the, to talking to the people. But I will this week touch base, base back with them and try to get an answer on as to how they want to move forward with it. Okay. Another thing, we got a dip in uh, Westgate, you know, right there where it's raining. And I talked to them, so they make it about 16, 16 feet. Well, I've reported that quite some time back, and uh, 
I'm sorry, I failed to follow up and find out if it was actually fixed or not. Mr. Mr. Davis, could you uh, respond yes, on we that? Fixed, we fixed the drain, the pipe is fixed. Uh, we got to go back. We're going to come back, cut the asphalt out, and re asphalt it. Okay. But it's not to the point of being dangerous or falling in anymore. No, sir. No, sir. Not dangerous, but when a car hit it, it's still bad. Yeah. Okay, that's in that first curve you're talking yeah. about, yeah. Uh, eastbound. Safety issue. Safety issue. Yeah. Ten. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Russell. Are we for sure it's completely flat and leveled out so we're not having potholes and nobody getting it and damaging and busting tires? We're going to cut it out. We'll play the bird. We'll be able to get asphalt first. We'll okay. Cut it out and we're going to asphalt. Is there markings around it, like cones or something no, to sir. warn people? No. Can we get some cones or something so people don't damage your tire? Thank you. One more thing. Go ahead. We got a house on West Head that needs grass is like this high. I forget what it has to do with it. It's right there, right there by the curb. Too. Right behind that gentleman you. Right the, behind you. Hip. Oh, he yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> after send, after send, the send meeting. Send me the address of it and, and I'll bring it to their attention. Okay. We'll get it taken care of. Thank you so much. Any other citizen comments? That brings us to our council comments. We'll start with Ward 1 since it's the first meeting. Councilman George. Oh, this uh, East Bay Hunt this past weekend was great. We had a good turnout. Uh, we had a great bunny. And uh, <laughs> those eggs went fast. We were like three minutes late and they were gone. Uh, so we know better next time. It, when your aunt and uncle stops by, you can't get them out the door. It's uh, kind of hard to get on time. But uh, anyways, other than that, you know, I look forward to a good year. It's springtime. I'll start having the, the uh, farmer's market and all of our good outside stuff. And uh, city staff and recreation, Chastity, and everybody, they do a great job with that. So I'm looking forward to it. I uh, appreciate everything everybody does. Thank you, Councilman George. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman Gallant? No comment. Councilman College? Uh, Saturday was a busy day. Our recreation department really went above and beyond uh, everybody's expectations, in my opinion. Uh, we had opening ceremonies for youth baseball. Uh, 95 children are, are playing the league this year. Uh, fantastic time. Uh, they did a good job getting the field prepared. Uh, had a little bit of rain, but it seemed like everybody enjoyed themselves. And as Councilman George said, we had our Easter egg hunt and movie night that evening. Uh, this weekend is our community camp out. Unfortunately, I won't be able to be there. I've got a high school reunion, two years removed, uh, that I'm going to attend. Uh, but I hope everybody has a good time. Um, and I just want to thank our city manager, the recreation department, and everybody that works with this city and makes, makes the city a great place to live in. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman College. Councilman Anderson. Uh, yes. Um, Mr. Tom Hammond left something on our desk tonight for us to look at. Um, it's concerning Cambridge Square subdivision. And uh, there's a lot, a lot of issues in there that haven't been addressed completely yet at this time. Um, like uh, the, the uh, ditch, the big ditch on Prince George at the borders of Sand Hill Crane Refuge. It's um, still in limbo as to what are we going to do? We're going to cover it. We're going to do an open ditch, or are we searching for funds to to do the pipe? Because the people in there do not want an open ditch that big. We decided that we were going to go ahead and did the open ditch when we thought, and then when we wanted to look for funding to come back and pipe it. That I had gotten the cost on it, and I. You gave it to me, and I don't know what it was. But it was two hundred thousand, maybe. How much? How much? Four hundred seventy-five thousand. Was that material and labor? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, pipe prices right now are just crazy. How long is that ditch? Two thousand feet. Long. Two thousand feet. But if I recall, the reason to leave it open at first was to actually see how much water flow the engineer recommended, to see how much was going through it, to see what size pipe. Am I not correct? Right. Okay. That's right. Well, we need to try to get this ditch moving. If we're gonna, if we're gonna go ahead and let's open it up, let's let's get what we need to right of ways through there or the 
fences moved or whatever it is. That's where the fences with the pit bulls behind them are the problem. Because what's happening is that entire Piccadilly Circus, Prince George Avenue drains to that ditch, which drains to the east and northeast around and hits that natural creek that goes across Martin Bluff Road. Right now that's not happening. Every bit of that water is like rivers down the roads going right across Martin Bluff Road. Now here we are fixing to rebuild Martin Bluff Road and I don't think we have designed the stormwater drain system on Martin Bluff, Martin Bluff Road to accept all that water out of that subdivision. And if we get this road built, we're going to have rivers of water coming off those three entrances to Cambridge Square going across Martin Bluff Road and eroding it away and causing a flooding problem. So it's whenever it gets done, it needs to be done before Martin Bluff Road is finalized or either we're going to have to design the stormwater system to catch that stuff coming down through there. What the plan is, is I told her mama, I think she sent the email tomorrow today, because the lady is saying it's on her property. I've got to have Mark go survey the places where the fence are and put pins down so they can't remove them. So I will know that yes, they are on our easement. If that's the case, my only choice left is I'm going to write them a letter and give them 10 days, and if they don't move it, we're well, going to tear them down. I just want to have animal control there with the pit bulls. Well, I wish we'd have started that when we found out we were going to have to do this. That was which was two months ago and not now. I, don't, I didn't know it was there until they called me. Uh, they, they were working on the ditch and got to a certain place and couldn't keep going. It was my understanding. So I didn't know if we were going to go around it, but then it would cause problems for that area. And then we did want to ruin what had been started. Right. If we went around it, you still would have that, you still got to cross that property. You couldn't tie it back in because there's the pipe and there it all collapsed and they full of roots. I understand. And I originally sent the woman who lives there a letter. She didn't respond. We went. Russell and I went up there and knocked on her door three times. We finally got in touch with her and she said that's when she told me that her, she got, she had someone do a survey of her land and her fence is on her land and not on the city easement. And that's where we're installed. Well, let's do what we gotta do. Let's light a fire and get it going and let's prove what we gotta do to get the fences moved or whatever we gotta do to get this ditch open and drain this before they get to the point on Martin Bluff Road. These three entrances to the Cambridge Square like today is going to flood them and their project to the point they can't work on that road in that area. I mean, it's going to be that bad because it's been flooding Martin Bluff Road now for year, for several years. So let's light a fire, get it moving, get something done with this ditch before we get to the point on Martin Bluff Road. That contractor comes and says, we can't work on this section of the road because of the flooding down these three streets coming out of Cambridge Square. So that's what I'm asking. Let's get, just get it moving get the fire lit and, and get going on it. Okay, brush piles from the attempted drainage falls have not been removed. I think we're talking about the brush piles in the little city, uh, little uh, neighborhood park that we cleaned out, Russell. Mm -hmm. Are the brush piles still in there that need removing as a fire hazard or? Not a fire, it's in the concrete slab. But it's still debris sitting up there from the clearing? Yes. Yeah, it's not rain and it's being dry. You would say that with the fire net? Well, th despite the fact that if we cleared the property, it, it should have been cleared out and, and brought to the landfill. So that's, that needs to be addressed. Well, let's, let's address that. Uh, the, the entry streets to Cambridge Square, which are three of them, I, I went across them today and, and they need some attention. Uh, some serious attention, which is just putting a few more rocks down and grading it down level. That, and after that rain, I'm sure they're in worse shape than what it was when I went through this morning. And I don't know if, Russell, you do that or is that the contractor? That's, right. That's the contractor. Let's get on the contractor and get them to address that. Because after that rain, I'm sure they're in worse shape than what it was when I went through there. And they were getting pretty bad then. There's some big holes on a couple of sides of a couple of the entrances that the car could run off in and be stuck completely without a record there to get it out. But the, the contractor needs to address that. 
Okay, I took several of the city representatives through there a little over a year ago, so I think it's about a year ago, about the buckling of the Victoria Drive, the concrete buckling. I've got it on the paving list. I think at the top of the list in my ward to be paid, but it cannot be paid until that concrete buckling has been cut out and prepared. So I'm going to move it to the back of the list until it's cut out and repaired to the point that they can actually pave it. Milling is not, you can mill that concrete down like it did down here in 90 at the Cornerstone restaurant, and it's going to buckle right back up. You can mill it again, it's going to buckle right back up. That piece of concrete's got to be cut out a, a couple of feet of it anyway to stop the buckling. Pack it with something, the, the rocks or whatever, and get it prepared for for paving because they're going to be doing our paving when at the end of this year or sooner. Well, they, they said they're going to do theirs first. We haven't even turned in our paving list to them yet because they're doing the county's first. So it'll probably be more towards, didn't you say September or uh, yes. fall? Yes. But, okay. So, the summer beginning of fall. You know, Russell, can you cut that concrete out and kill it? All right, we'll do it. Well, I'm trying to. Fix my favorite and lift a suit, and this one I think was on the top. And well, I'm just said he would cut the concrete. Yeah, would leave it on top. Yeah, because uh, basically, leave it on top. He's basically, if you can cut out the concrete on each side of that joint a couple of feet and pack it up with limestone, right? And let that limestone get good and compacted when they come well, and pave it. It'll that's what I've been trying to get it done for over a year now, and it's not been done. And, and I wanted it packed good before they paved it. Yeah. That, that was the whole idea. So now's the time to do it. So. Yeah, I would leave it on there, Councilman Anderson. Do you have anything else? Can I'm looking. Okay. If, we, if we're going to go after funding for this Prince George ditch, let's go ahead and go after it so we can, as soon after as possible, we get an open ditch. And this open ditch is going to be big. And the homeowners there are not going to be happy with a ditch big enough their children could drown in. And, and it's not like it's going down through a wooded area down to a bayou uh, down here in some of the southern part of Goche. This ditch is right at, off the back of those, it's, it's practically in their backyards in the easement of the the uh, power and the drains and sewer and stormwater and everything else. So we're going to get the ditch opened up when we can. Let's go ahead and try to see if we can go after funding for it and get it something. Well, we, we're looking for funding, but it has to fit within some buckets. I understand, we, but that's... We kind of got our antenna up looking for something that fits. Okay, you know? let's just don't let it slip through the radar and let's... And, and the, it's not just that ditch, the entire subdivision, we might need to go after more than just that ditch. We, we probably ought to get Russell in there and look at this subdivision where we fix the drainage from Piccadilly over to that ditch and make sure it's still in good shape at, at that point. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Anderson. Councilman Elvin. Oh, I haven't had a chance to talk to Mr. Wozencraft in reference to that sidewalk project. Where are we at as far as that project goes? Are we? It's a, yeah, it's in close out. There are a few little items that need to be looked at, but it's it's closed out. Do you have an issue? Uh, well, I've, I've been brought to my attention several times by the homeowners at uh, LaGrange, not LaGrange, uh, Grandview. Grandview and Mark Bluff, where that road, it puddles. Are you already aware of it, Mr. Russell? Yes, sir. Well, we, we cut the road today uh, Thursday when we made yeah. a rain pipe across Martin Street and the rain. Yeah, this morning they called me and was asking how that's going to work with, uh, uh, I guess, a heavy rain flow because the, the today wasn't that bad and it's still puddled up. You did address it today? Yes, sir. We okay. cut the road on uh, Thursday morning. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to go across the Grange also, so you can put yeah. both in there? Yeah, and that should take care of Mr. Decato there on that right. section. Mm -hmm. Because what they had initially was like a little six inch ductile iron pipe, mm -hmm. and it was clogged most of the time, but it was just enough to where I guess they would let the water seep. Okay. So when they put the sidewalk in, they took out that section of pipe, and we're going to go just slightly to the east of where that sidewalk is on Grandview and run it north. Okay. and tie into that ditch and then we're going to be right there uh, 
where those cones are to get that, right. that flow under. We're going to run a pipe across Martin Bluff Road and tie it to the ditch that runs north and south of Martin Bluff Road. Okay, so it's not, there's no longer a Lozen craft, Sean Lozen craft issue. It's, it's clear water's helping us at this point. Yes. Okay. Uh, another issue was brought to me this morning was the strip of road between Grandview and the three way intersection at LaGrange. There's a dip in the road right in that portion, and they're not sure if that might be an indication of possible sinkhole or a, a line, you know, that's uh, collapsing. But I, I noticed it when I go over. If you go at a slow speed, you still it, it jolts you a little bit. It's on Grandview, you said. It's right there between. It's on Hickory Hill Drive Hickory between Hill Drive. Grandview okay. and the three-way intersection at Lagrange. So right around the Crouch right property. Now. Yeah, it's right there about in front I had of the address, but I forgot to write it down earlier. Uh, it's noticeable when you go through there. That's from where all that water has been standing there for years. Yes. All right. We're going to cut it out. We, at the rest of it, we're going to cut it out and pack it, pull the line, throw it, come back and patch it over. Well, I know part of that area, Seymour Engineering has been surveying all that also to come up with a capital improvements project for drainage to help assist that area that because it's kind of the, that's the flattest spot in all of Hickory Hill right there and it just holds all the water after it rains so it was that was another uh, question I was going to ask but I know in the beginning uh, a few months ago a few months ago when we met up there uh, at Hickory Hill Drive and LaGrange we were talking to those those neighbors in that area that they're asking now where we're at in that project and i guess that's what you just brought up we're still coming up with a plan for that the drainage in that area we've done a preliminary engineering for the outfall we've provided some cost estimates and basically looking for funding again that was a that was a pretty expensive one also wasn't it um miss shancy wasn't it over a million dollar cost three million. estimate three million three million was a three million cost estimate to do, address that drainage issue? Can we get a can we get a copy of that or email copy of the cost estimate? You're talking about the he broke it down yeah. into uh, I broke it like down phases. It's about, it's about five sections, so we could hopefully bite it off in pieces. Right. Um, like yeah. Big jump. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that that. The four million dollars pretty much handled the entire lake, the Katita, the uh, Grange, pretty much that whole entire area. So, yeah, if Mr. Yancey, if you could, can I get or all of you a copy of that breakdown? Can you please send it to yeah. me just because I'm able to find her stuff? So, uh, this is more for Chief Bevers. I'm getting request for a neighborhood watch a meeting or somebody to represent the police department talking to the neighbors up there they're they're wanting to speak to somebody on the, the public safety side in reference to the issues they're having with the, the increase of i guess crime we're having that are you talking about all that lewis no this is just this is the hickory hill i mean it would apply everywhere but Specifically for our ward up in at Ward 5, we're getting a lot of people calling in reference to wanting to speak to the public safety, have another neighborhood watch meeting. I don't, I'd leave that up to you. Uh, do we still have that position? Yeah, uh, Sergeant Etheridge is still in. Sorry? Sergeant Etheridge is still in doing that. If you could, I mean, arrange that, would be great because I'm sure these people are wanting to speak. No problem. And I think if I could just piggyback on that, I think a lot of it has, <clears throat> there's been a couple of posts on Nextdoor specifically where individuals are called, uh, dispatched supposedly to get a police presence up there and they feel like they're being ignored. So I think that's part of the issue for why they're requested neighborhood watch. So the residents up there know who to call, when to call, and you know, under what rhyme and reason to go ahead and call dispatch to come out there so one, one last thing uh, myself and councilman large were talking about the the boat launch i i, I call the boat launch at the end of fairway Is yeah that that's what that we get the tidelands application in for 2023 yes we did submit a tidelands application for that to okay funding. so it's still it's in the works well, you know, we submitted our Thailand's projects. I haven't gotten the 
the final title on the thing yet. I've only got some other stuff. So I, as soon as I, I'll probably find out tomorrow. Are we privy to what that's going to look like? Because I, it might have already went out. No, what we, so we submit those projects, mm -hmm. and they may find one, they may find two, they may find all three. It just depends. So, when so we once just, we get the funding, then through the legislature, then come January, we will get a grant agreement. So you'll have to enter into a grant agreement. Once you do that. Then you can start with the process of figuring out what's going to look like and the design and you know all that kind of stuff. Well, I knew uh, Councilman Large told me that we were in that process. I didn't know if there was. Um, we had a preliminary. Runs a year behind, basically. Basically, I mean, we have we have the generalized idea of what's going to do. The engineering hasn't been completed yet, but you know, if we were doing a finger peel on the south side and redoing that boat launch. Yeah. So about that. Yeah. Is there any parking available for that boat launch? No. no. That's what we discussed. How no, that would work out. One last thing is the lights <laughs> on the frontage road and Martin Bluff <clears throat> Road. Are we moving any further along with that project, or where are we at with that? I know we got. I know we got quotes. I have. I didn't receive a quote for the lesser lights. I'm uh -huh. still waiting on that from okay. Senior River Electric. I'll follow up with you tomorrow. Okay. And what uh, Councilman Elvin and I had discussed, initially the initial quote was for 34 lights along Frontage Road, and that was for every pole. Uh, with us discussing, we were thinking it was going to take 17 lights to put additional lights to pretty much cover all the utility poles from Frontage Road mm -hmm. up to Little Bend. Uh -huh. And then that would leave 17 lights for Frontage Road. So split the two up together and go ahead and light the rest of Martin Bluff Road from Frontage Road up north to Little Bend and then get to the other half, the 17 lights. Yeah, but stuff. still keep like the 34 fixtures total, but split 17 on Martin Bluff Road and 17 on Frontage Road. Okay. We have no lights on Frontage, right. but we have sporadic lights on Martin Bluff. Okay. So I think that 17 additional lights on Martin Bluff would go a long way. Okay. I'll get in touch with so we'll leave it dark between Frontage Road and the Martin Bluff Elementary School. When they complete that section of project, Martin Bluff Road, all the way along, then I think we light that up. When they complete it. When they do the phase one of Martin Mark Bluff, why? Phase one widening project because they got to go ahead and repave that stretch of road also all the way up to Frontage Road. Yeah. When that project is completed, if we don't light it up beforehand, then we light it up then. Because well, we're going to have to Martin Bluff Road. That'll be 25 years from now. <laughs> no, the phase one widening project redoes the section of road from. Years from years now. Now. No, but what I'm saying, the phase one redoes, <laughs> reworks the road to the elementary school, but then from the elementary school north to Frontage Road, they're getting repaved. Yeah, repaved. Yeah, it's going to repave. You think we get lights put on it for with the paving project? Well, as part of that project, when it's said and done, then we could work and make yeah. with the Second River to. Half the traffic goes that way, and right. half goes Frontage Road. Right. So it's, and it's dark there too. So. Right. The majority of foot traffic is between Frontage Road and Little Bend. Yeah, and a lot more than okay. in front of Is that all we have? Yeah. That's all oh, we have. Okay. Um, I just want to echo what Councilman College said, Councilman George. This weekend was a busy weekend in the city of Goche, and our staff, our city manager, the Easter Bunny, um, Chesty, and Recreation, and um, HR, um, the city clerk's department, everybody, the police department, the fire department, everybody, it took every department to fill in out there to make our city event and they all did a great job and kudos to all y'all for partnering together to make a wonderful event. It was all positive feedback. We had a lot of guests from out of town. If, citizens did not know or staff that bragged on how nice in which they had that event in their community. So kudos to y'all. Also, the first um, Pentecostal church here in Goche, I want to give kudos to them and 
Rachel Ward, our planning commissioner, Josh Ward's um, wife, she was very instrumental in working with our recreation department. And I think if you see her or any of those volunteers, I uh, remind you to please thank them because without them, we wouldn't have the league. So I want to, once again, y'all all did a phenomenal job. Um, as far as lighting, while we're lighting the northern part, Let's get a cost estimate on lighting the southern part and the middle part. Um, Dolphin is dark, very dark at night and dangerous, and so is Graveline Road. So if we can just, while we're getting these cost estimates, so we can look at the whole city as a whole of lighting needs. I think we, when Chief Elbin, um, Councilman Elbin, who was the chief at that time, we had him do a study and provide it to us, um, to the city manager and board. So maybe if we can get the safety concerns, the officers who drive at night, um, to look where they see are belighted and dark also and give us an update so we can get estimates. Because I get complaints on Graveline Road, Dolphin, over on Lewis Alexis, Homestead, a bunch of areas we're getting complaints of darkness. Um, as far as Mr. Hammonds, um, we will also get with the city manager and pick that date to give you so you can meet we'll get with councilman anderson also councilman college will pick a date to invite the neighborhood up here to get an update on us on the status of trying to address the drainage and your neighborhood concerns um so we will get that date to you um in the next few days okay. also as we heard from councilman anderson mr hammond's list if we could get with the contractor, it is bad from entering in there, so it is got potholes. But after a personal experience a few weeks ago, I encourage us to send a letter to MDOT once again um, about our potholes on Highway 90 and ask them and notify them that we're putting them on notice that we have potholes so they can't deny a claim saying they do not know we have potholes. Also, Public Works, we have potholes, so let's get them filled. Uh, if we turn down a insurance claim because we have not filled a pothole, it's not going to be nice because we should be filling the potholes. With that being said, I hope you all have a good week. Also, I want to congratulate Chief Bevers. Since our last board meeting, he was promoted to our chief. Congratulations and welcome. Would you like to say anything in your new role, Chief Peppers? Or... Uh, well, <laughs> thank the opportunity. If you guys got any plans or anything, my door is always open across the street. Come see me anytime. Thank you again. We're blessed to have you here in Goche. And I have no other comments besides thank you all again and have a great week. Brings us to our city manager comments. Yes, Mayor. Uh, we normally take Good Friday in the place of Confederate Memorial Day, which we're allowed to do by statute. Um, and it kind of slipped through the cracks since April 15th is Good Friday. So I have a resolution before you uh, trading that holiday for Good Friday and um, throughout the years. It just has to be on your minutes. What did you call it? Okay. Good Friday. It's, so there's certain legal holidays in the statute, right. and you're allowed to sub change one, swap one, for something else that's not in the statute, like Mardi Gras or a Good Friday or something like that. And we have always swapped, it's whatever the first, fourth Monday in April is, Confederate Memorial, I think, some kind of day, because mm -hmm. legally you can swap that for Good Friday. Okay. But you just have to put it on your minutes to do it, and it just kind of slipped through the cracks this year. So. Mm -hmm. Good Friday is actually next, this coming Friday. I believe it's Friday. All right. Do we have a motion to approve order number 000-22022 that was presented by the clerk's office and the city manager exchanging legal holidays to allow Good Friday to be a legal holiday for the city of Gochum? Almost.
Motion by Councilman George. Second. Second by Councilman College. Any discussion? Start with Councilman George. I uh, enjoy your day off and your time with your family. Uh, I love Easter. I think it's a great holiday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. No comment. Councilman Gallat. No comment. Councilman College. No comment. Councilman Anderson. No comment. Councilman Elvin. No comment. All in favor? Motion carries. Y'all enjoy your good Friday. <laughs> um, any other comments, Ms. Nancy? Thank you. That brings us to our city clerk comments. Ms. Montgomery, do you have any? You for sure? Come on, Teresa. Thank you. <laughs> At least once. <laughs> <laughs> I know what, I know what <laughs> um, that brings us to our city attorney comments. Do you have any comments? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to pick up the slack for this Teresa and uh, ask that you want to close the session. Okay, if you hold on. Real fast, I also want y'all to follow the Jackson County Chamber. If you did not attend the forum, they do have two candidates. They're down to the school board um, with the Pascal Gautre School District. I encourage you to go watch their forum that was on their platform, their social media platform, Facebook. Go and if you have a decision or have a suggestion, I ask you that you reach out to your school board appointees that you elected and give them your comments and you have till tomorrow afternoon, I think, to turn those comments in. Also, if you didn't know, our girls um, powerlifting won state championships. So if you see them, kudos, give them kudos. Um, it's their first time winning the state championship. So. Uh, a lot of great things happening here in the city of Gutshack. Now we'll turn it over to the barrier of sad news to go into closed session. <laughs> Mr. Deadhouse. Do we have a motion to go into closed session to see if we go into executive? So moved. Motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Anderson. We're in close. Um, all in favor? Motion carry. We're now in closed session. If y'all want to step outside the city attorney, I'd come out and just...